As we mentioned earlier, our customer today is Lockheed Martin on behalf of the Republic of Korea. We now have a quick message to share from Korea's president of the Agency for Defense Development. 안녕하십니까? 국방과학연구소 소장 남세규입니다. 코로나 19로 어려운 환경에도 불구하고 아나시스트 위성 발사에 참석하신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 한반도 평화를 위한 것으로 한국의 IT와 우주 분야 연구 개발의 한 단계 도약이 되길 희망합니다. 원래 창설 50주년을 맞는 국방과학연구소는 아나시스트 위성 발사의 의미가 남달라 저도 코로나 19 상황으로 발사장에 직접 참여하지 못해서 안타깝게 생각합니다. 비록 물리적 거리가 멀리 있지만 지능적인 온라인상의 사회적으로 가까워진 거리와 시간 때문에 저도 마음은 발사장에 계시는 전문가 동료 여러분들과 함께하고 있습니다. 라키드 마틴, 에어버스 그리고 세상에서 가장 스마트한 펠콘 라인 발사체 발사를 주관하는 스페이스 X 모든 분들의 노력에 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 대한민국 국방부 방위사업청 합동참모본부 각군 관계자와 특히 함께 연구한 국방과학연구소 위성통신체계단이 응원하고 있습니다. 아나시스트 위성발사와 목표한 계도내 시험까지 성공하길 진심으로 기원합니다. 우주의 신들은 하늘길을 열어라 펠콘라인 나가신다 아나시스트 완벽하라 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. People are catching down range. M1D propulsion is nominal. Plus 40 seconds, everything looking good? That's the call out, says M1D engines are throttling down, getting ready to reduce vehicle acceleration in preparation for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the bottom of the throttle bucket as they call it. Now the Merlin engines coming back up to full power as we get ready to go supersonic. Vehicle is supersonic. Supersonic, we're coming through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer confirms we're through the period of greatest pressure on the vehicle. Continuing downrange, trajectory looks good. Propulsion looks good, avionics looks good. And back to chill has started. That announcement from stage two propulsion. We are now beginning to chill in the turbo pump on the upper stage engine to get ready for its ignition coming up in about 45 seconds. Nice view from the SpaceX cameras at Cape Canaveral as we head east out of Space Launch Complex 40 into the first of two orbits planned for today. This orbit is the parking orbit, a low Earth orbit uh, trajectory that will take us uh, over the equator and will eventually relight the upper stage engine to transfer us into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Now main engine cutoff, or MECO, coming up in several seconds, followed by pneumatic separation. The first stage pushes away from the second stage, and then ignition of the second stage engine. Stage Mico. separation confirmed. Miko on time. Stage up looks good. And the call out, MVAC D engine is at full power. The view on the left screen, you can see the large titanium grid fins now slowly opening. That begins about a two minute period as we slowly rotate the first stage around to get it ready to come back through the atmosphere and land on the drone ship in the Atlantic off the east coast of Florida. 
Right hand side second stage engine glowing red. That's normal for the MVAC D. Trajectory. Trajectory is nominal, we've heard from the guidance engineer. Great views coming from space. We're coming up on fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've heard the call out from the avionics engineer. Fairing separation is confirmed. I think you can see in the background behind the MVAC D nozzle, uh, one half of the fairing way in the distance uh, as it went past the camera. So right now we're coming up four minutes into flight. Trajectory is looking excellent. We're right down the middle of the road. Power on the upper stage engine is good. Bermuda is now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9, and we're getting great views from space at T plus four minutes and 13 seconds. For those of you just joining us, we had a successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 rocket at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, from Cape Canaveral. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, our second stage, uh, its engine is glowing as we continue to take the Anasys 2 satellite payload to its desired orbit. Uh, on the left-hand side, our first stage, we're beginning, to, uh, we're beginning our recovery attempt on our drone ship uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the next milestones coming up include that first stage's entry burn, followed by the second stage engine cutoff, known as SECO-1, uh, the first stage landing burn, and then that hopeful landing. The entry burn will occur at about six and a half minutes after liftoff. And what you don't see pictured here are those two fairing halves. They've been jettisoned, uh, and it'll take some time for them to get down to, uh, to sea level. So we won't be covering uh, on the webcast that recovery attempt status, but stay tuned on social media for updates. You see some pretty clear pictures of Earth there. Uh, the first stage has reached Apogee. It's beginning to head down there. Uh, we're only going to be firing three of our Merlin engines during this entry burn in order to slow the vehicle down before it gets to the thicker parts of Earth's atmosphere. It'll slow the vehicle by about 25%. Uh, when we perform uh, stage separation, uh, that first stage was traveling about two and a half kilometers per second. So we have a lot of velocity to reduce. Three. And we're just under 30 seconds from that entry burn beginning. It's going to last about 24 seconds. We're 10 seconds away from entry burn. Hopefully we'll be able to hear that call out and have visual confirmation that burn's begun. Stage one, entry burn startup. Our entry burn has begun. You'll see that, that uh, the exhaust there will grow and start to become elliptical as we turn on the engines. The center engine fires first, the two side engines fire shortly after that. So that exhaust will seem to grow during this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. All right, one burn down, one to go. That's the landing burn. Uh, it'll occur in about one minute from now, along with uh, the next milestone, uh, the second stage engine cutoff or SECO-1. Uh, that'll be at T plus eight minutes, seven seconds. Uh, during SECO-1, we shut down the second stage MVAC engine on the right-hand side of the screen. Also signal first stage, Cape Canaveral expected. In about 25 seconds after SECO-1, Falcon 9 will touch down, hopefully, on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, currently, it's in the Atlantic, uh, about 350 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. Start of terminal guidance. And in terms of velocity of that first stage, uh, drag alone is slowing the first stage down another 80%. That landing burn will take us back, to get that last 20%, touch us down safely. Just under 10 seconds from landing burn and Seco 1. Seco. 
Stage one, landing burn, startup. We have confirmation of both landing burn and SECO-1. We're waiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion for that ANASYS-2 satellite. And the landing Stage laser, one. so landing laser deploying now. Nominal park orbit insertion. And there it is. That is our 57th successful landing of a Falcon 9 on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. While we were watching that landing, we also had confirmation of nominal orbit insertion. Uh, we're all pretty excited over here at SpaceX for being able to use this uh, first stage for a third time coming up. Uh, but going back to our primary mission on the second stage, uh, it's going to coast for about 18 minutes until we cross the equator where we perform the second of two burns of the upper stage to help change the orbit. Uh, we're going to take a break until then. We're going to leave you with a map of where we are in the mission. We'll be back at uh, about T plus 26 minutes for the second burn of our MVAC engine. Welcome back. John Insparker here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's T plus 26 minutes. In about 30 seconds, we're going to get relight of the upper stage engine called second engine start number two, actually second stage engine start number two, or SES2. Now this burn will be a little more than uh, 55 seconds, and that'll carry us into the transfer orbit, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you a view of the engine burn as it gets going. From the map you can see we're just about to cross the equator. That's where you do an inclination change that's most efficient. We've got ignition on the upper stage engine. And propulsion engineer calls out that the ignition looks good. We're up at power. Now currently when we went into the burn, we were at a low Earth orbital speed of about 7.4 kilometers per second. This burn, just under a minute long, is going to add another 2.5 kilometers per second to that velocity. That's what it will take to get the satellite and the second stage into the geostationary, geosynchronous transfer orbit. We're throttling down, getting ready to shut down the engine. Seco 2 confirming the second stage engine cutoff number two. Now we're going to wait and listen for guidance to tell us how the orbit works. And we haven't heard guidance engineer call out, but looking at the data plots that we've got from nominal vehicle telemetry, insertion. we've got a nominal orbit. So we are into the desired geostationary transfer orbit, the Falcon 9 second stage with the Anasys 2 spacecraft still attached. We're now going to go through a period of about three and a half minutes where we prepare to separate the Anasys 2 satellite. We're going to take another quick back break, and we'll be back at T plus 32 minutes for satellite deploy. T plus 32 minutes, it's been a great mission so far. Falcon 9 lifted off, we had a 30 minute weather delay as we had a little bit of a shower band go by uh, the trajectory. Uh, but when we launched, had great skies. We had great views from first stage and second stage. Saw the first stage land on the drone ship. We've done the two burns of the upper stage engine. Both of them were nominal. But right now we're getting ready for the big event, which is spacecraft separation. And as a reminder, we won't see payload deploy today per the customer's request, so we're going to listen in for the avionics engineer to call it. Payload separation confirmed. And there it is. Avionics engineer calls. Payload separation has deployed, confirming that via telemetry. And so, 32 minutes, 49 seconds into flight. That's the capper. We've done the primary mission. We've brought the first stage back to the drone ship. Been a great day, took a little while getting here, but uh, well worth it with a totally successful mission today. 
we've also had successful payload separation that will end our coverage for today. Uh, we want to say thank you to Lockheed Martin and the Republic of Korea for entrusting us with today's flight. Also, a special thanks goes out to the 45th Space Wing for range support and to the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. And of course, thank you for watching. Have a good night.